the larger project here is hugely ambitious and earning international acclaim. We are actually recreating the whole ecosystems. It's one of the, of the few places on Earth where we're not just trying to save a few odd plants and a few odd animals. We're actually piecing together as best as we can. It will never be perfect, but as best as we can, the whole ecosystem as it existed prior to the arrival of man. Should we be frightened of this animal? Should I be frightened of being this close to this animal now? Well, I, I'm not frightened of the animal. I don't know why anybody <laughs> should, should be. There are some, in some countries where bats are dispersing uh, are carriers of diseases. Uh, but in Mauritius, that's not the case. Uh, of course, where there are carriers of diseases, there are some precautions to be taken, of course. But that's not the case here. Rajan, would you like to hold the bat? Are you serious? Yes, it will. Really? It will probably oh my God. Right. nibble you a little bit. Nibble that's, me. That's okay. Okay. And oh its claws can be quite sharp. Yeah. All right. You could. You, you must take this. There oh, you go. Wow. And now it's. <laughs> I can't believe it. This is weird. That's all I can say. This it's... is a magic moment. I never thought I'd actually find a bat or an animal like this vaguely even cute, but you know what? It is kind of cute. And luckily not disease ridden. No. As it bites my no. finger. No. <laughs> no Do you want to fly off? Should we get you to fly off? Come on then. <laughs> Animals are central to Mauritian identity in more ways than one. Take this weekly ritual, which has become tightly wrapped up with Mauritian social life and culture. Going to the races. The island's independence from British rule was declared on this very race course, the Champ de Mar in 1968. Built more than two centuries ago, it's the oldest race course in the Southern Hemisphere. And from the start, its very aim was to bring disparate communities together. Oh, and to satisfy the locals' love of gambling, of course. And today, there's one family who now dominates horse racing in Mauritius. Actually, uh, it was my grandfather who introduced the family to horse racing. He was the first uh, Indian to be a member of the National Assembly of Parliament. And in 1904, uh, he was a businessman. He, uh, at the beginning, he was a, a milk seller. But then uh, he started doing business, uh, buying land and buying and selling land and property. He also realized that buying a racehorse would allow him to mingle with the big cheeses, especially French businessmen, who ran the economy then and loved racing. Today is a very special day. It's the final classic race of the season, the Duke Cup, and a chance for this elite family to create history in the country's national sport. What has happened is that uh, we have been able, with a bit of luck, to win the first three classics. And uh, if uh, we win the fourth one today, we will be creating history. And we got a peek into the paddock and met my, Soon's uh, cousin. This gentleman, I know him very well. <laughs> I, I often see you on the BBC, oh, all yeah. over the world. This is very much a family affair. Yeah. That's the cup we are looking for. This one? Yeah. This one here? Yeah, this yeah. One here. Oh, wow. <laughs> can I touch it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyone can touch it before, but I want to touch it after. afterwards. <laughs> This is fantastic and giving a real insight behind the scenes with one of the most important men in racing. Mm. 
inside the jockey's room, preparations are underway. And down by the track, I can feel the sense of occasion here. Here is where everybody gathers, rich, poor, everyone, whatever language, culture they're from, whatever ethnic group. This is the day, and this is the first race of the day. I wanted to get a feel for the passion for racing and gambling here, and so I approached a local punter. I'm from England. Do you recommend any horse and any races? I think that this one is good. Rogue Runner, number three, Rogue Runner, in the next race? In, the, in this race. In this race coming up? OK. Yeah. I'm going to bet. It's number, it's number three. Number three. I, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's my horse, number three, Rogue Runner. And if I put 100 rupees on it, it says I'll get 600 rupees back. Hey, can I have 100 on number three, Rogue Runner? No, number three. Whatever. A lot of money on going on Rogue Runner. Rogue Runner. In the horse. You like Rogue Runner? <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> this is what's number three. This is my horse, Rogue Runner. Go for it. I like his uh, colours. <laughs> Do you want number three? Number three. <laughs> Here they come. for the climax to the season, the big one, the Duke's Cup, and a chance for the Gujadu family to make history. They hadn't left much to chance. They've got three horses out of the 12 running, including the favorite, Enad, written by the most successful champion jockey in the race. Our man's in his lucky spot to watch the race next to his family. The favourite and their big hope, Inad, is struggling. It doesn't look good. Get out, get out, man. Don't let him box you, man. Until from the outside, another horse from the Gujadu stable suddenly starts making ground. Ready to attack is, well, ready to attack. What do you feel? A sense of relief, almost? Or really? uh, frankly, I don't get worked up before a race. I watched you during the race. You yeah. do a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to because you know the the people around and the the well wishers, the supporters, mm. everywhere you go around the island, you know they just wish you well, and uh, I wanted to win that race for them. And in this 50th anniversary year of independence, it seems the people of this island have plenty to celebrate.
During my time here, I've seen the strong sense of nationhood amongst Mauritians and also a realisation that precious wildlife must be protected. This is a relatively prosperous country, breaking free from its complicated and sometimes shameful colonial past. And what's exciting is that right now, its unique cultural identity is still evolving and making it so much more than just a high-end holiday hotspot.